Hi guys. I don't know if my head's being chopped off or not, and I don't care actually. So anyway, we have made it to another hot and miserable summer day in Austin, Texas. Friday, I believe, June 7th, 2013. So Friday is probably the easiest day I have to be a doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist and the chronicler of the downfall of global industrial civilization because this is when I bring you my ecological meltdown roundup which is a very easy job because I simply click on my email and get my weekly newsletter from my heroes at mangabay.com and I will put the link to Manga Bay so you can order yourself this uh, this newsletter which I think is the number one best survey of the environmental media both the alternative and the mainstream media Manga Bay surveys all of these stories uh, from all over this planet about how this planet is going to hell in a handbasket and so we're just going to take a romp around planet earth to see what is going on uh, since last friday and the ongoing collapse of planet earth and i'm running late to a folk festival all week so let me charge ahead with this and then head off to a picking party with my lovable clueless friends but uh this will be my last rant probably until monday possibly tuesday so no doomsday sermons this week sorry guys anyway jumping right into this doomsday sermon on friday all right down the list we're gonna start out in uh i don't even know where we're starting out uh this is a Saving the Ten Kyle, an expedition to protect one of the most endangered animals you have never heard of. Uh, I have no idea. I'm going to guess that this is, we're going to call it New Guinea. Uh, it's wherever the Torricelli mountain range is. Nowhere does it say what country. I'm going to guess the Torricelli mountain range is in New Guinea, and this is the Tenkyle, or the Scots tree kangaroo, is the latest uh, animal on this planet. Uh, here, the Tenkyle's trouble, like so many other creatures on this planet, stems from a sharp increase of human settlements in the Torricelli mountain range. Uh, once relatively isolated, the Tenkyle, like 10,000 other uh, of his fellow earthlings, now struggles to avoid hunters and towns while still having sufficient range to live in. So let's wish the Tenkyle wherever the Torricelli Mountains are, look. All right, from the Torricelli Mountains, let's head over to Indonesia, where we find this, the flat, uh, the sky is blue headline, mining in Indonesia, taking a heavy social and environmental toll. And uh, so, I'm not going to go, the headline says it all, and there's links, if you go on to Manga Bay, there's links to all of these stories. Uh, guys, mining anywhere, on mining on planet Earth takes a heavy social and environmental toll. It doesn't matter whether it's Indonesia or West Virginia. Okay, speaking of West Virginia, let's uh, move back over here to the southern United States, drawing dots between uh, the global economy, uh, energy use, being biofuels. How, now, how many dots are getting ready to be connected in this headline? <clears throat> 
southern United States logging soars to meet foreign biofuel demand. All right. So in order to meet the European Union's goal of 20% renewables by the year 2020, uh, European utility companies are moving away from coal, and that's a good thing, and replacing it with wood pellet fuel. So there you go. Uh, the idea is simple, that trees will regrow. Uh, uh, duh. Anyway, but just like other simple solutions, it misses out important details that could turn it on its head. And for those details, you know, this, this, this is one more story, guys, that uh, every time you, you try to replace fossil fuels, which is the, the uh, number one goal on this planet, is to get rid of fossil fuels. And when you go to these alternative fuel ideas, they too. And what sounds like such a simple idea, it doesn't matter which one. There is no way, there is no way to power the human race w without screwing the planet. It's that simple. The more people on this planet there are using more energy to power all of this planet-eating crap, uh, we're going to kill the planet. And I think that's the, uh, that's the dot connecting in this story. Anyway, moving on from the southern U.S., uh, let's go from there to Australia where we find Australia taking calculated actions to push the lead beater's possum to extinction. All right, uh, Australia's leading scientific expert on the endangered lead beater's possum has publicly lambasted the Victorian state government claiming it is the first ever domestic government administration to take, quote, calculated actions that it knew could wipe out a threatened species. Uh, Professor David Lindemeyer states that, quote, the government sanctioned legal logging of the reserve system, the protect, I'm assuming the protected reserve system, will significantly increase the chance of the extinction of the lead beater's possum. So here you go in Australia. Uh, they are moving in uh, into far these protected forest reserves. Uh, you know, with full knowledge that they're going to send the, this little critter to extinction. Um, you know, anybody who thinks these corrupt forestry officials and, and all of this horse shit, I was talking about this, and, and you know, last Friday's rant, that if you think because something shows up on a map as a protected reserve, whether it's in Victoria, Australia, whether it's in Borneo, whether it's in the good old U.S. of A., uh, you know, up there in the National Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, guys, Oh boy, anyway, uh, moving on. Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Brazil touts progress in reducing deforestation, but fails to note the recent jump in, in clearing. All right, so uh, today in a press release, for the UN's World Environment Day. I guess the UN's World Environment Day must have slipped right on past me. Uh, the day before yesterday was UN's World Environment Day. Completely slipped this environmental alarmist attention. Anyway, uh, so to celebrate that, the Brazilian government, how many, uh, don't get me going, don't get me going. The Brazilian government highlighted a sharp drop 
in deforestation since 2012. The only trouble is the South American superpower failed to acknowledge what appears to be a sharp rise in Amazon forest loss since last year. Reports Greenpeace. Okay, so we have the Brazilian government claiming to the UN on World Environment Day uh, that they had a sharp decrease in deforestation last year, and we have Greenpeace saying the complete opposite. Who are you going to choose to believe? Okay, from Brazil over there to Africa. Let's get back uh, to this elephant poaching. And how about the dots in here connecting uh, Chinese demand for ivory with the uh, political, just, just completely the, the, the chaos, the political, environmental, social chaos going on over there in Africa. And who do you think is caught up in the crosshairs of all this? It is the elephants and the rhinos. All right. African militias trading elephant ivory for weapons. Jesus Christ. Uh, and this could be a whole rant, but I'm just going to mention it now. I'll probably come back with a whole rant in a couple of days. All right. The Lord's Resistance Army. you got to love the name. The Lord's Resistance Army is using lucrative elephant poaching for ivory to fund its activities. Activities, according to some new report, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> Eyewitness accounts from park rangers, uh, Lord's Resistance Army escapees, and recent senior defectors report that fugitive warlord Joseph Coney, who is wanted by the International Criminal Court for war crimes and crimes against humanity, ordered African forest elephants to be killed in Garamba National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo and the tusks sent to him, uh, you know, to sell to these businessmen, to these middlemen, uh, taking, the, uh, taking these tusks over there to China and then that is what is bankrolling all of these, uh, you know, all of these guerrillas and rebels. And guys, I never know uh, who, to, who to vote for on this. You never know whether, whether the joke uh, government in power, I can't, you know, or the rebels, who's to bless and who to, who's to blame. My guess is every goddamn one of them, it doesn't make any difference. And, and who's sitting in the damn uh, king? thrown and who's out there in the jungle every damn one of them every one of them is uh, is killing elephants and selling them to China Jesus Christ okay uh, let's see from Africa let's go back over to Malaysia where we find this headline palm oil expansion endangering rare frogs in Malaysia. Expansion of the palm oil industry in Malaysia is destroying key habitat for endangered frogs, putting them at a greater risk, finds a new study published in the journal Conservation Biology. If frogs to orangutans to indigenous tribes Okay, let's see, where were we in Malaysia? And now let's go just, I guess, all over Southeast Asia, which probably includes Malaysia and all over there, where we find the headline, Monitor Lizards Vanishing to International Trade in Pets and Skins. <clears throat> okay. The world's monitor lizards, these are the world's biggest lizards, you know, including the Komodo dragon. Uh, 
It's a new study finds that the world's monitors, especially those in Southeast Asia, are vanishing due to the international pet trade and for their skins, which are turned into handbags and straps for wristwatches. Meanwhile, the rapid destruction of their rainforest homes is exacerbating the situation. From uh, tree kangaroos, to frogs, to elephants, to Komodo dragons, uh, here's Chewbacca bats, here's farting beetles. You know, guys, this just goes on and on and on and on and on. All right, we have, unbelievably, guys, unbelievably, we have some good news from the planet, although this probably, you can draw your own dots to the Keystone Pipeline from this headline. Canadian province cancels tar sands pipeline due to environmental impact. All right, efforts to expand production from the Alberta tar sands suffered a significant setback. This is last Friday when the provincial government of British Columbia rejected a pipeline because of environmental shortcomings. In a strongly worded statement, the government of the province said it was not satisfied with the pipeline company's oil spill response plans. So here you have inside their own country, inside their own country, you, you have uh, these people telling these, these goddamn planet eaters, don't bring your dirty ass uh, oil across, uh, uh, across British Columbia. So, uh, you know, where do you think it's going to go instead uh, when, when Obama rubber stamps this thing in a few weeks? It, it, you know, it's too dangerous for Canada. Just ship it on down across the U.S. Just send it on down here. And so we can deal with all your goddamn oil spills so we can pipe all of this shit and send it to China. Jesus! All right, uh, where was I? Uh, from Canada, from the good news in Canada. Uh, I guess this is, is any ocean where a manta ray uh, swimming around. <clears throat> manta ray tourism worth 28 times more than killing them for traditional Chinese medicine. I am getting so sick of this term, traditional Chinese medicine. Okay. A new study in the journal, blah, 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 blah estimates that manta rays are worth $140 million a year in tourism across 23 countries, significantly outweighing the worth of manta ray gill plates. Manta ray gill plates, which have become the newest craze in traditional Chinese medicine. Isn't that a contradiction in terms? The newest craze in traditional Chinese medicine. Oh, Jesus, where are we? Uh, Guys, I'm just, I'm just, I, I'm just gonna jump ahead. I'm, uh, I, I've, there, you know, this would, I could go on and on with this. And my clueless, uh, lovable friends are waiting for me at a folk festival to get, to get this damn, uh, doomsday prophet shit off my chest. Okay, let's just, ju let's just. Uh, jump to this one. I don't even know where. Let's go back to Brazil. Uh, loss of big fruit-eating birds impacting trees and endangered rainforests. The extinction of large fruit-eating birds in fragments of Brazil's Atlantic rainforest has caused palm trees to produce smaller seeds over the past century, impacting forest ecology. <sighs> Talking about digging for dots. Uh, and, and I'm not even going to go, I'm sick and tired of this next story. 
higher CO2 levels cause greening from fertilization effect. I've had two rants and I promised my second one would be the last one. This is the article that that idiot uh, Mike Adams latched on to saying that taking this study uh, about uh, car about increasing levels of carbon dioxide uh, actually adding vegetative mass to some very limited uh, array of plants on this planet and him taking a uh, anyway if you want to find out what if you have any desire to see how how that idiot twisted and perverted these facts there is a link to the article the smoking gun but I'm done with with talking about that moron uh, okay uh, then they have three stories in a row guys at some point I have got to do uh, a rant about this red R-E-D-D -D, the selling of these carbon credits uh, to fight global warming uh, uh, you know, I am a dumb hippie on a rock. I try to find out the mechanisms of this so I can speak intelligently. But you start, can somebody do an idiot's guide to red, R-E-D-D? -D? Uh, I don't even know what the... What does it stand for? Uh, they just never even say what the goddamn uh, letters stand for. But anyway... Uh, whatever it is, their third story, uh, they do a whole group of stories. I notice in their third story, market for red carbon credits declines 8% in 2012. The market for carbon credits generated uh, some climate change mitigation approach known as red dipped 8% in 2012 and I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing but uh, I'm suspicious of it I just smell a rat it's that simple I smell a rat the rat's name is Al Gore uh, anyway uh, enough of that okay two more and I will wrap this up okay uh, Millennium development goals falling short on environmental ambitions don't you love that contradiction in terms environmental ambitions I love it okay this week in New York City the 27 members of the high-level panel of eminent persons appointed by the UN Secretary General will deliver a report providing recommendations on the post-2015 development agenda. Uh, you know, this is a critical opportunity to address the inadequacies, the inadequacies, I bet, of the Millennium Development Goals and to chart a new course for sustainable development. My guys, I've had rants before on the inadequacies of the UN's Millennium Development Goals. They're a joke. They're a joke. There's nothing sustainable about them. The UN, as Alex Jones will say, are the single biggest bunch of goddamn globalists on this planet. You know? It's a damn bunch of planet eaters uh, ramping up global trade all over the... And I don't care how you slice it. This global trade, there's nothing sustainable about it. Anyway, and let's wrap up this rant because i got to get uh, with a climate change story. All right, <clears throat> for the final story. Earth likely to warm between 2 and 6 degrees Celsius in this century. A new study by Australian scientists projects that the world will likely warm between 2 and 6 degrees Celsius, that is 
translates to three and a half to almost 11 degrees Fahrenheit from pre-industrial levels by the year 2100. The study published in Nature Climate Change finds once again, probably the 10,000th study, uh, finds once again that exceeding the two degree threshold is very likely under our business as usual emissions scenarios even as scientists have long warned that passing the two degree mark will lead to catastrophic catastrophic climate changes we've been hearing this shit for 20 years you can you can you you can uh, kiss two degrees goodbye. This is two degrees Celsius. It's somewhere between four and eleven degrees, guys. And this is over the next eighty-seven years. Uh, four degrees is going to be bad enough. Uh, Ten or eleven degrees, kiss it goodbye. We are toast and that is the bottom line of my Wednesday rant and my Friday uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant which I am finishing right now and jumping up off here and hopping in a gas sucking car because I gotta head out to join my uh, lovable clueless friends uh, drink a bunch of tequila smoke a lot of weed play a lot of music and uh, I bet uh, not one of these stories that I just mentioned will, will ever leave the lips of anyone uh, this weekend. So I will, hopefully I'll be back on this rock on Monday with my economic uh, meltdown roundup. Until then, this is your all doomsday prophet and environmental alarmist saying, bye guys.